What is up YouTube? Today we are going to be building a very simple program that makes an HTTP request to a server and then reports the status code of the response. I'll show you a little demo of what the end result looks like. We'll just do a little go run. And charm.sh is the endpoint that we're hitting. And 200 is the status code that we're getting, which is good. Our website is live. That would have been very concerning if it was a different number. But that's pretty much what we're building. We're going to build it out with bubble T. And we're going to run into a little bit of information on commands and give you some context on how you can use them effectively in your own programs. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, let's start building out our commands tutorial. If you haven't seen part one, go back, watch the basics video first. This one's diving into T commands a little bit more and it's gonna be a little bit more complicated. I very strongly recommend that you see our video on the basics or read the basics tutorial before watching this video and following along. Disclaimer complete. Now let's talk about commands. This is the second tutorial for bubble tea covering commands. Okay. First one was basics, which we went over in the last video. And for this tutorial, we are going to be building a very simple program that makes an HTTP request to a server and reports the status code of the response. I, I vote that we just get right into the code. So let's toss aside Firefox and get in there. Okay. Let's do HTTP codes. That's what I'm going to call it. I could call it commands tutorial, but that's, that would be too, too sensible. So we're going to go mod init HTTP codes. There we go. Hide my mistakes. Okay, cool. And then let's go ahead and create our main.go. So here we'll just de declare that it's package main and we will go ahead and add some imports. FMT, we'll add net slash HTTP. We will add OS and we will add time. And then finally, last but absolutely not least, we will add bubble tea. GitHub.com slash charm bracelet slash bubble tea. Perfect. And let's create a const for URL that is going to be our very own website. And let me just zoom that in a little bit to make sure you can see it clearly. Without further ado, we'll get... Now let's start declaring our model. So this is going to be a data structure. So we'll just call that a struct. We're going to have a status. Just gonna be the status code that we're getting back. And we'll have an error. In case we get any errors. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about commands and messages. So commands are functions that perform some kind of IO and then return a message. For example, a key press or hearing back from a server. Checking the time, taking a timer, reading from a disk, network stuff, all of those are also under the umbrella of IO and should be run through commands. So the commands are basically under the hood, a little go routine that's running in the background when it completes it returns the result. That might sound harsh, but it will keep your bubble tea program straightforward and simple. So let's write a command that makes a request to a server and returns the result as a message. Back to the code. Perfect. And then let's define our command. It'll be called check server and it returns a type t.message. This is the basic, basic function signature that you're going to need for it to be considered a command. It's basically anything that doesn't have any parameters and returns a t.message. So go ahead and do that. Let's create a new little HTTP client. Okay. Create a client, set the timeout to 10 seconds. 
we'll get the response error. It is going to be c.get and the URL. And then we'll check if the error does not equal nil. We're going to return an error message. We'll show you some cool stuff we can do with that in a little bit. And then finally, we will return a status message, which we haven't defined yet. Perfect, perfect. And then let's go ahead and define those types. So status message is going to be a wrapper, just going to be an int. And then we are also going to have a type for error message. And that is going to be a struct with an error. Struct error. Error. For messages that contain errors, it's often handy to also implement the error interface on the message. So let's do it. So func, we'll do e error message. We'll have error, which returns a string, and it will just return e.error.error. .error. Perfect. So now error message. There we go. Just add a little context there just for fun, for funsies. And then here you can see that in our check server, we're returning two different message types. So they can be any type, even an empty struct. And basically the point of these messages is that we're going to be able to handle each of these cases when they come into our update. We'll get into that a little bit later. Our model isn't a t.model yet because we haven't actually implemented the interface, but we're going to implement our init method first. So here we'll get that, get that going, get init in there, returns a t.command. And then here we are going to return check server. The initialization method is very, very simple. We're basically returning the command that we made earlier, check server, and we're not going to call the function because we're actually returning the command, not the message. So the bubble tea runtime will do that when the time is right. It will call check server when it is time. Let's talk a little bit about update function. So first I'm going to write down the little signature here, get our message in there, which is type t.message. And then we will also return a t.model, t.command. And let's talk about the update for a second here. Internally, commands run asynchronously in a Go routine. The message they return is collected and sent to our update function for handling. Remember, those message types we made earlier when we were making the check server command, we handle them here. So the status message, the error message, we're going to decide what happens when those come back with information in them in our update. So this makes dealing with asynchronous operations super, super easy. So first we are going to do a switch on the type of the message. So we do message.type. And we'll get a case for status message, which is one of our custom types that we've defined. And in this case, we're basically going to set m.status is equal to the message that we receive and we're just wrapping it in an int, in the int type, okay? And then we're going to return m comma t dot quit because we're only going to run it once, basically. We're going to run it a single time. And then in case of an error, so if we have an error, we're going to get an error message back. And then in this case, we can set m dot error is equal to the message. And then we can return m comma t dot quit. And this is where it's very, very helpful that we implemented the error interface for error message because we can just define it. We can just directly assign that to our error field. And then let's handle our key presses. So t dot key message. That way we'll have some way that we might want to quit. So we'll do if message message.type is equal to t.keyControlc. 
Then we are going to return m comma t dot quit. This is a bit of an older way of doing it. So I'll show you a, another way that you can actually do that. That is a little bit more up to date. I might even PR this later. We'll see. Might mess around PR it a little, you know. Uh, we can do if message dot string is equal to, and then just compare it to the actual string representation. And then we would do return m comma t dot quit. And that will do the same thing. So these are equivalent. Gofumt is very confused, but it's fine. And then finally, we're just going to return m comma nil. And then finally, let's build out our view function. So the view is super straightforward. We're basically going to look at our current model and then build our string accordingly. So here we'll do the standard little signature of the function that we need to implement. And we're going to check if m.error does not equal nil. We are going to just return the error message. Sprintf. And we're going to do n. We had some trouble. Dun, dun, dun. And then m dot error. Okay. Okay. And then otherwise, we're going to give it a little bit of feedback. So in the meantime, while we're waiting potentially for the status message to arrive, we are going to have a little string that tells us that we're checking, it's working, it's in progress. Checking, and then let's add the URL as well. Perfect. Declared but not used, that's fine. If m.status is greater than zero, so if we've gotten something back, then we'll also add that to the string. We'll add the status code and the status text. So we'll do m.status and then we'll set http.status text. We'll have a string that gives us the status code and the text surrounding that status code. And then we will also just send off whatever we came up with above for rendering. Do that right here. Add a little new line. Add our string. And then add a couple more new lines for fun. Mostly for fun. And the last step is to create our main method. Let's go ahead and type that out. Speed run. And do if error is equal to t dot new pro wow, new program model dot start. So in this case, you could also use if you had an initialization, like new model, initial model, you could also use that function here. But in this case, we don't have that. So we're just doing a little empty model we're fine with the default values that'll give us and if error does not equal nil so if there's a problem starting it let's do a little print in action i will say uh oh there was an error One more thing that you need to know about commands is that commands are defined in bubble T as a command with a function signature that has no arguments and returns a message. So they're functions that don't take any arguments, return a message, which can be any type. If you pass arguments to a command, you just make a function that returns a command. For example, there is this command with arg where it takes an ID and then it returns, it uses the ID later down the line and a more real world example might look something like this check some url where you're given a url string as an argument you return a t dot command and then here you're basically doing all of the stuff that we had already defined in our example 
which is creating a client, doing a get request for that URL, checking if there's an error, if so, returning an error message, otherwise returning the status message. And basically the only thing that would change from our example here is that, let's see, here, we would have, you would be able to actually call it and add your whatever information that you needed. So in this case, if it was the URL, actually I can just use the URL const. It would look something like this as an example where you actually need to have arguments and you end up actually just returning a t.command from that function so that you can actually pass in that data. This is how you would call it in your Bubble T programs for that to work. I hope I explained that well. Let me know in the comments what you liked or didn't like. We're always very open to feedback. We want to create content that you are genuinely interested in learning about and things that will add value. So please don't hesitate to let us know if there's anything that you feel could be improved. From here, you can check out some of the example programs. You can check out Bubbles, start working to tie some of those together. We have some projects that are featured in our uh, bubble tea in the wild section of our readme and we also have a very, an upcoming repo that will have a lot of project inspiration project ideas and some example implementations of some different projects as well and that should give you a good amount of context don't forget that our own projects are also built with bubble tea so you can always look at charm or soft serve if you want to look at more full-fledged examples on how we use bubble tea in production. Thanks again for watching. Congrats if you made it this far and definitely let us know what you're building. We'd love to share it with our audience and help you find contributors if that's what you're looking for. We'll see you next time. Bye.